Our next item is a presentation by Yang Bechomat Dato Dr. Chong Chi Hyong, who is the Deputy Director of General Public Health in Malaysia. As you know, Malaysia is going through the third lockdown and Dato Chong was concerned that he might be called away to deal with an emergency at the last moment. So rather than send a deputy or cancel his talk, Dato Chiang wanted to support this inaugural conference personally. So he came up with the brilliant idea of using technology to create a personal message to everyone here. You will see a video created by Dato Chong last night, but I'm also pleased to say that he has registered for the conference and is attending with us. The keynote address is titled, The Impact of COVID on Mental Health Care, a Ministry of Health Perspective. The presentation discusses the collaterals of the pandemic and the emerging challenge of providing mental health care to sections of the populace deeply affected and the promise of clinical hypnotherapy as a valuable treatment. Cooperation of disciplines is highlighted, as is the changing methods of treatment delivery. Thank you. Honorable Mr. Peter Mabu, President of the British Society of Clinical Hypnosis, Ms. Shella Menon, President of the Asia Pacific Society of Clinical Hypnosis, Dr. Mohamed Dewa Abdullah, President of the Malaysian Society of Clinical Hypnosis, officials from the Ministry of Health Malaysia, speakers and panelists, doctors and practitioners, fellow participants, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to our colleagues in the UK and the US, and good afternoon to our Asia delegates. Firstly, I would like to congratulate the British Society of Clinical Hypnosis and Asia Pacific Society of Clinical Communications and Hypnosis as well as the Malaysian Society of Clinical Hypnosis for the initiative in organizing this inaugural international virtual conference in clinical hypnotherapy. This conference has brought together medical and healthcare professionals and clinical hypnotherapists who have been doing such excellent work supporting patients in this time of crisis. I'm delighted to see more than 400 international colleagues most of whom are trained for practicing clinical hypnotherapy, gathered here to share and learn from the experience of working both physically and virtually to help patients wherever they are during this crisis. The increased demand and need for mental health care crisis intervention places mental health care firmly on the table for discussion. Thus, the theme of Your Mind Matters is very relevant today and is no longer a health issue that takes second place to other diseases. Once we start talking about mental health, there will be a normalizing benefit for the great many people who are affected personally or see a family member crushed by mental health issues. Since the beginning of last year, the entire world was faced with the devastating COVID-19 pandemic. The first wave of COVID-19 infection in Malaysia started on the 25th of January 2020 with only 22 cases. There were 11 days when we had no cases from the 16th to the 26th of February 2020. The second wave began on the 27th of February 2020 and subsequently the third wave which began on the 20th of September 2020 and lasted until now. The COVID-19 pandemic took all nations by surprise and no one country has been spared. Healthcare systems around the world were forced to rally in order to meet the surge of COVID-19 patients. But as we have learned, when resources are directed to avert national disasters, they are naturally diverted away from a holistic health approach. It is important, therefore, as we emerge from this acute phase and begin to move forwards to the new normal, that we also address the needs of the patients requiring non-critical healthcare services, particularly that of mental health care. As we are going through this global crisis, another hidden pandemic that has surfaced is that of mental health, a disease that has been emerging during the last decade. Countries around the world are not spared from the impact of COVID-19 on the emotional and psychological health of its people. 
mental health issues have increased around the world with mental health care agencies reporting between 37 to 70% demand on services. Waiting lists that were stretched before the crisis with patients waiting for mental health care services are being stretched even further. In Malaysia, the National Health and Mobility Survey 2019 showed approximately 500,000 individuals aged 16 years and above suffering from depression. In addition, between January to December 2020, the data from the Ministry of Health showed 1,080 cases of self-harm being admitted to government hospitals. Meanwhile, the Royal Malaysian Police announced another alarming and shocking statistics, revealing an increase in 2% in the number of suicides from 609 cases in 2019 to 631 cases in 2020. Generally, the COVID-19 pandemic has brought two risks. One, the immediate crisis caused by people trying to survive the immediate impact of the pandemic. And second, the hidden risk, which will come when people are struggling to adjust to the new norms. It has been a hard year for everyone with the current MCO that we are going through now. Society will be at risk of social isolation, insecurity and uncertainties. There will be tragic life events such as loss of loved ones, loss of livelihoods, which brings about anxiety, depression and other emotional challenges. Many people, including the frontliners, struggle to cope with the pandemic and the mental health care clients have needed emotional support. This is also reflected in the calls received at the psychosocial support helplines established since the beginning of COVID-19 pandemic, such as the helpline Ministry of Health Mercy Malaysia, helpline KASE and helpline KSK Care of Jaki. Collectively, a total of 101,000 calls were received between the 1st of January to the 21st of May 2021. Of this, 91% needed emotional support or counselling. Among the issues faced by this cause are the loss of jobs, no source of income, family conflict, interpersonal relationship problems, stigma against infection, isolation, and lack of access to services during the movement control order. Organisations such as Prefenders and government hotlines were overwhelmed by calls. In Malaysia, the Malaysian Mental Health Association also saw an increase of more than twofold in people with stress-related problems. And as we will attest, there has been no difference in other parts of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, comprehensive public health pandemic strategies are required to provide universal screening, anti-stigma campaigns, and health equity focus access to mental health care, with special efforts focused on the needs of high-risk populations. In addition, the significance of clinical hypnotherapy is recognized particularly in management of medical illness and the treatment of psychological and psychosocial issues. Hypnotherapy is not a new discipline. It was endorsed by the British Medical Association, Association in 1892 and has since been accepted by medical communities globally. In Malaysia, its establishment was in 1984 by our physicians with the support from Malaysian Society of Clinical Hypnosis. The re Dissemination Framework Report on Clinical Hypnotherapy, which was published in 2014, concluded that clinical hypnotherapy has the potential to become a widely disseminated, disseminable psychotherapeutic intervention which with a significant public health impact across multiple outcomes for a variety of patients in medical settings. The Ministry of Health Malaysia has reviewed the literature on clinical hypnotherapy between 2015 and 2019 and recognizes its value in treating a number of symptoms and conditions, particularly in chronic and acute pain management and in the treatment of depression and anxiety. COVID-19 has made it necessary to discuss the access and the value of telehealth when we talk about mental health care, the potential of digital health to increase access and quality to mental health care is becoming clear. Telehealth offers an ideal solution of delivering mental health care in today's crisis. The COVID-19 crisis and global pandemic have highlighted the role of telehealth and how digital tools like apps can offer care in times of need. 
many clinicians and their patients had to resort to these apps where physical consultation becomes impossible. Digital therapy programs offering courses on evidence-based therapies provide much needed training during this crisis. They also have a unique opportunity to include international debates, cultural diversity, and easily scale up or down. The need for more mental health services will tax an already overburdened healthcare system. We can anticipate that digital solutions will be called upon again to provide both total solutions and to develop hybrid solutions that offer a blend of face-to-face -face and online therapy and even app-based treatment to provide the most effective solution. Of course, further efforts and investments will be required to ensure ethical and effective outcomes. One of the requirements is teaching healthcare professionals, training practitioners, and peer support specialists on how to use digital and mobile technologies for delivering care. Although training alone may not offer an immediate solution to the current crisis, but it does create professionals who can offer both digital health and classical care. This builds the capacity to support increased access to care for the mental health. On a larger scale, there may be a requirement to address disparities which impact people with low income. Communities which lack access to digital technology, including smartphones, lack of suitable private space for the therapy and to provide solutions that protect data. Addressing these factors make digital health available and encourage the people who most need it. Speaking from a public health perspective, I encourage you to consider the potential benefits for remote support of lifestyle interventions such as sleep, physical exercise and healthy diet that also have an impact on the quality of the patient's life and reduce the cost of ill health. This type of, Ill, this type of simple intervention can be particularly important during periods of isolation or sedentary behaviour. Physical and social distancing, as well as self-quarantine, have already placed millions of people at a higher risk of disruption to lifestyles that are likely to have impact on mental health. Beyond the importance of healthcare services and technology, is the importance of building support to get us through these challenging times. We can support each other's mental health by finding ways to reach out to friends, family, neighbours and people who may be especially vulnerable to COVID-19 or who are acutely feeling the loneliness that accompany physical distancing. Companies also have a role to play by helping their employees who will inevitably face the same challenges. First, they can educate employees by talking about mental health, making it clear that mental health symptoms are anticipated and expected during and after an event such as this. They can make resources available for employees to talk about normal anxiety and sadness and make access to non-stigmatized existence if the symptoms begin to affect their daily work function. Employers and managers can make sure that they are mental health service providers to whom employees can reach out when they struggle with mental illness or emotional challenges. There is another group to whom we owe a huge debt and whom we should not and cannot forget. I'm speaking about healthcare workers and frontliners around the world who have risked their lives and are today at risk of significant psychological distress as a direct result of the COVID-19 pandemic. The most common of these are anxiety, depression, insomnia, distress, and post-traumatic stress disorder. The Ministry of Health applauds the London School of Clinical Communication and Hypnosis and the London College of Clinical Hypnosis Asia for the successful initiative in the development of the LSCCH Therapy Centre. The development of this virtual therapy platform, which is significant and timely, and has the potential to bend the curve in improving and increasing access to mental health care support. The virtual platform is especially good for patients who have long work hours and little spare time, or those who work remotely in regions where support is not available. Importantly, it allows collaboration between medical, healthcare, psychotherapy, and clinical hypnotherapy professionals to provide support to clients and patients at the optimum level. This effort has become part of the narrative, not just how for digital health is used today, but the future and continued development of best care practices. Finally, I would like to congratulate the participants and speakers for their hard work during this pandemic and the help you have offered the many different people around the world. 
Congratulations to the organizing committee for successfully conducting the events and special thanks to Malaysian doctors and practitioners of clinical hypnotherapy who are contributing to the global knowledge of this discipline. All of you make this conference more meaningful by your efforts to be here today. With this final remark, I officiate the inaugural International Virtual Conference in Clinical Hypnotherapy 2021 and the initiative of the London School of Clinical Communications and Hypnosis and the London College of Clinical Hypnosis Asia by declaring the launch of the LSCCH Therapy Centre for both virtual and in-person therapy. Thank you. The LSCCH Therapy Centre is a collaboration between the London School of Clinical Communications and Hypnosis and the London College of Clinical Hypnosis in Asia. It is supported by the British Society of Clinical Hypnosis and the Asia Pacific Society of Clinical Communications and Hypnosis. The centre provides a safe and confidential virtual therapy space offering clinical placement for new therapists, a career pathway for practicing clinical hypnotherapists, and support for frontliners and people who have been affected by the pandemic. It is with great pleasure we declare the LSCCH Therapy Centre open. Introducing the LSCCH Therapy Centre. The Therapy Centre is accessible anywhere and at any time. We have a growing number of therapists in the UK, Malaysia and in Singapore, so you can be sure that you'll meet a therapist who is culturally sensitive and can probably work in your preferred language. We believe that together we can and will make a difference to the people we care about. Our commitment is to bring kindness to others at a time of trouble.